Hey guys, Levelcap here, and today in gaming we finally get the reveal date for Battlefield 2021. AMD drops some bombshells, EA is pulling the plug on several classic games, and much more. DICE has finally confirmed something specific about the next Battlefield game, and that's that it will be revealed on June 9th. They uploaded a brief teaser video with the reveal date on social media. Unfortunately, there's not much in the way of info beyond the date. The video has the signature glitchy distortion effects that we saw with Battlefield 4's marketing, and the music is very electronic sounding. That backs up the leaks and speculation about the game returning to modern military combat and the franchise's roots in Battlefield 3. Be sure to subscribe and enable notifications to catch our coverage of the reveal. We'll have a recap of of everything DICE announces as soon as possible. AMD dropped some bombshell announcements during their Computex 2021 keynote presentation late last night. They announced two new Ryzen 5000 APUs, the Ryzen 5 5600G and the Ryzen 7 5700G. They're priced at $259 and $359 respectively and come equipped with RDNA graphics cores. This gives them a surprisingly competitive level of performance in games like CSGO, Warframe, and Rogue Company. Performance isn't exactly on par with the latest and greatest GPUs, but these new APUs pack insane value for gamers on a budget. They're scheduled to launch in late August. They're adding a lot of value to their latest products by rolling out their answer to NVIDIA's DLSS upscaling tech. Fidelity FX Super Resolution, or FSR for short, is launching on the 22nd and offers comparable visual quality to DLSS while massively boosting performance in supported titles. But unlike DLSS, FSR will run on both AMD and NVIDIA GPUs. This is a huge deal because it means developers can easily support both AMD and NVIDIA's upscaling tech without segmenting their player base by what GPUs they have. That being said, the visual quality of FSR lags behind DLSS slightly, but when you're getting 59% more FPS with it enabled, it doesn't really matter that much. Also, it took NVIDIA a little while to really dial in their DLSS effects as well. FSR also works on AMD's new and and existing Ryzen APUs, which will give them a massive performance bump. To sum up AMD's announcements, we're really on the precipice of a new age of gaming tech. In a couple of generations, AMD's APUs combined with tech like FSR or DLSS could mean discrete GPUs are optional instead of necessary for high-end gaming. And having something like FSR being hardware agnostic is also a big deal because it opens the door to intelligent upscaling tech for everyone, not just NVIDIA users. AMD did the same with FreeSync, which competes directly against NVIDIA's G-Sync tech, but works on both NVIDIA and AMD GPUs. NVIDIA have since enabled FreeSync support on their GPUs to catch up with AMD. Of course, NVIDIA also had a few surprises to reveal at Computex during their presentation. They officially announced the RTX 3080 Ti and 3070 Ti. The 3080 Ti launches on the 3rd and is basically a 3090 for $1,200 with half the RAM. The 3070 Ti will likely perform about as well as the 3080, but only supports 8GB of GDDR6X VRAM. And that's a big bump from the 3070's non-X VRAM, which will give a big advantage in VRAM intense workloads. The 3070 Ti launches on the 10th for $600. Of course, the real question is, will anyone actually be able to buy them at launch? Considering it's still extremely difficult to buy new GPUs at MSRP, our guess is, well, probably not. The final big Computex announcement was Doom Eternal is getting ray tracing and DLSS support. Nvidia showcased the game running with just ray tracing enabled at 4K on an RTX 3080 Ti during their presentation, and the results were impressive to say the least. This is without DLSS or any sort of resolution trickery running at an average FPS of like 90. And this is incredibly impressive, as is the footage. DLSS is also being added to Red Dead Redemption 2 and Rainbow Six Siege. Eternal's ray tracing and DLSS SS update drops this month. CD Projekt Red reported a massive downturn to their quarter one profits. They dropped by nearly 65%. And that's not too surprising given the state that Cyberpunk 2077 launched in and the fact that it's still not available on the PlayStation Network. The bad news doesn't end there though. The developers also released a roadmap for the game that doesn't give us any idea when future updates and improvements are coming. Expect some free DLCs and the game's next gen enhancement update in the second half of this year, but there's no timeline or details about those updates. 
EA are pulling the plug on several Need for Speed titles. Carbon, Undercover, Shift, Shift 2, and The Run have all been delisted from the digital storefronts. Online servers for these games are shutting down at the end of August. These titles represent a massive chunk of the franchise's legacy, though they're not exactly booming in popularity these days. EA paused development of the next Need for Speed game so its developers could assist DICE with Battlefield 2021. Once their work is finished, they'll go back to working on Need for speed. Activision is also pulling the plug on an aging Call of Duty game. COD Online, which is a free-to-play game in China, is shutting down at the end of August. Chinese publisher Tencent manages the game, but Activision didn't renew its license this year due to declining revenue and the booming success of COD Mobile. That game is available on both PC and mobile devices, and COD Online players will be encouraged to switch over before servers are shut down. The latest Warhammer 40k game, Necromunda Hired Gun, launched yesterday to mixed reviews. Critics praise the environment's more fluid gameplay and weapon selection, but most other areas are getting knocked for lack of polish or quality. NPC interactions feel stiff and lifeless thanks to bland acting and rigid animation. The level design ranges from great to bad, and the general gameplay is marred by imprecise controls. In general, it sounds like Hired Gun is still a solid title that a few updates could improve. Just don't expect it to turn into a groundbreaking title. Crytek aren't just working on a Crisis 2 remaster after all. They just released a teaser trailer for the Crisis Remastered Trilogy Collection. They launched a remaster of the original Crisis a few months ago. While the reaction to it has been pretty mixed, it's a definite improvement over the original version of the game. The remaster also added new tech like ray tracing and DLSS. So we can expect those features with the remasters of Crisis 2 and 3. The newer Crisis games still look incredible and run just fine on modern hardware, but Crytek made several minor improvements to the original game's controls and settings that would be great to see in the sequels. The remastered trilogy launches this fall. Watch Dogs Legion is getting a zombies mode called Legion of the Dead. The mode pits you and up to three other players against waves of zombies in the game's open world environment. You race to secure several supply packages before extracting. Vehicles are disabled for the mode, so no mowing down zombie hordes with a sports car, at least for now. Before we get to our final story today, don't forget to subscribe to catch our coverage of the Battlefield reveal. We'll have in-depth coverage for the trailer and any info DICE announces as soon as possible. Minecraft's upcoming Caves and Cliffs update is rolling out in part on the 8th. This update will add some of the new features and animals coming with the full update, which is due out at the end of the year. There's also new blocks and items coming in the update on the 8th. And that wraps it up for Today in Gaming. As always guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.